that was our season in a nutshell. Ronaldo saving us yet again. The scoreline flattered us. We should have lost five or six. That's how bad we were. Goals in the second half from Alonso with an incredible volley. Curved in quality. He's back in the Spanish squad, by the way. Well, De Gea doesn't even get in the Spanish squad, nor does he start for his country. That tells you all you need to know, doesn't it? But well, Luis Enrique thinks about him. And then against the run of play, Matic, two assists in two games, both Fina and Ronaldo. Fantastic, another goal for him. And uh, yeah, he just does it yet again, doesn't he? Without him, we would be nowhere. I'm not having this discussion about without David De Gea, because Ronaldo hasn't been in the Premier League, right? since 2009 and it's changed since when he was last here so you can't compare the two at all and as a start if Ronaldo didn't score those goals we would be hovering around the relegation zone so anybody that tells me he's finished you need to read the room and actually get some sense around you because you're talking absolute drivel if you think of it I thought McTominay did very well for me, he should have shot in the first half when he had space to shoot. But he didn't do that. De Gea made saves. Uh, once again, Bruno, ordinary, awful, a shocking footballer. Doesn't even know what to do when he gets the ball. He needs a shake by somebody because his, his performance is a lack of having been up to scratch. And it's funny, isn't it? that I criticised Bruno Fernandes before he kicked the ball in earnest for Man United. And now he's getting criticism by top reds. Could you believe that? I mean, they were mocking him the other week for his car crash. If that was one of their family members, God forbid, who was involved in a car crash, I'm not sure it would be a laughing matter for them. I'm not sure they would be happy with people making lewd jokes about it. There's a line and there's a line you do not cross and they cross that line. But we all know these top reds got scans in their closet making xenophobic comments during the penalty shoot time between Man United and Villarreal. Anti-Semitic comments that got them the sack by GD Sports as well. Need I say more? A law to themselves. Anyway, just a mute point there. Overall... Wolves, Wolves have got two games in hand. Uh, Arsenal Spurs have got two games in hand. So I hope we don't get European football next season. I know top reds want European football. You know, um, when they say something, I say the complete opposite. I don't agree whatsoever. Let's not have European football. Let's finish eighth and let's go from there. Because European football cripples your season in the Europa League. And I don't want to be in that competition. Okay? That's my version of events there. Maguire didn't play because he's out for the rest of the season. Oh, that's convenient, isn't it? Do you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if they did that deliberately. Saying, oh, without Harry Maguire last few games, let's see how Man United uh, cope without him. And if they don't, um, you know, win games of football. Oh, look, missing Maguire. It's the same top reds, by the way. Oh, we missed Maguire against Villarreal in the UEFA Cup final. I think you'll find that against Sevilla in the semi-final, Maguire was playing and he was at fault for the two goals that Sevilla scored. So put that in your pipe and you didn't smoke it. And I don't like Ralph Rannick's comment when he came out saying, because he cost 80 million, he should play for Man United. What a load of nonsense. Man United are in control, right? When Larique got the boot from Newcastle, Mike Ashley made the decision to terminate his contract even though he was going through illness at that time. It can happen. It can be done. So I'm not having this nonsense because he's cost 85 million. It doesn't mean anything to me. He's not good enough. He never has been and he never will be. I can't stand the sight of him. He's everything that I don't like in a footballer. He's everything I don't like in a person. I think he's a scumbag. That's what I think. Yeah, But you talk about his love of criminal, don't you? It's took you this long to criticise him, Bruno Fernandes, yeah, the fanboy's favourites. So people should listen to me in the future because I know what I'm talking about. I set the scene, and I said Wamba Crapper as well, when we signed him 
what he did or didn't do for England in the 21s is a glimpse into the future how bad he's been. And he's been shocking for Man United. Only five assists in 2021. That is shocking. And if you compare him with Rich James tonight, I'm afraid that's how you do it. That is what a fullback does. Now, maybe if Conte come in, he could have rejuvenized his career and he could have been like Victor Moses, you know, playing as a wing back. That saved his Chelsea career. And then he went to Inter Milan, he won the league title with them as well as, as Chelsea. So, mate, Conte would have been the perfect manager for Wamba Crapper. Maybe, just maybe. We'll never know now, but that's the way I see it. So, uh, tough, um, you know, season. Got Brentford on Monday night, got two away games and against Brighton and Crystal Palace, so let's see what we get from them.